<clears throat> Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Covenant Calendar Club. And uh, for those of you that are visiting us on YouTube or will be viewing this study at a later date, we just want to give you a warm welcome and shout out and say to you, Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Shalom. We pray that you are richly blessed from this teaching. We thank Abba that he has drawn us to himself to investigate his calendar so that we can walk in it. And we give him the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that he's done, is doing, and will do. And with that, we're going to not spend any more time. We're going to jump right into it. So I'm going to turn the, uh, the, the uh, camera over to Charlene. If, if you want to control the screen and and get us going, we'll be blessed to, to hear what you have for us this evening, to hear what Abba has for us through you this evening. So, is everyone ready to go? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go ahead and mute, mute my mic, and you guys uh, take it away. Okay. So, this is part four of our series that's called The Moon, All oh, the Moon. And I just thought that maybe we should have a few introductory slides here tonight on a review of exactly why we're doing this calendar. Um, we've been, I just was challenged this afternoon by an email that um, it doesn't really matter when you keep the day start. Um, and we've given this information to this gentleman in Africa. Um, but he's just thinking that, you know, whatever he's doing is good enough. And uh, they are feast keepers. And you know what? Uh, that is not Torah talk. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> that is something else. Anyway, what's on the table for the study tonight? Is it a pauper's table? Are you just going to get a few breadcrumbs or are we going to be dining at the king's table with a full meal deal? And we talked about this, I think, on the very first um, uh, moon study that we did, that uh, this particular calendar study will be the real meal deal. Um, we have had many, many people ask us, you know, to explain calendar. Guess what? Uh, we want three verses for this or three verses for that. And uh, could you do it in 20 words or less, you know, or in 10 minutes? It's like, no. <laughs> so, but we just felt that um, for a covenant calendar that those that are coming to the table to eat will want to have the full meal deal. But the question is, are there going to be any surprises on this menu tonight? So there might be a lot of surprises, a lot of questions. But Covenant Calendar is going to get to work. And the covenant of the calendar was given on the first day of creation. And it was starting out with the covenant of the day and the covenant of the night. You can find that in Jeremiah 33, verses 20 to 25. I can't tell you how long it took us to figure out that this was actually a covenant <clears throat> on the first day of creation. Um, never really thought about it before, but it is. And the foundation of this calendar is all about understanding the word evening or Arev 6153 in the Hebrew. It's about that word evening, and we did our first studies around that word. Covenant calendar is a very important covenant given first. Before the covenants of the rest of the week, we have a covenant that is on the midst of the week or the fourth cycle or Wednesday in pagan terms. There is a covenant of marriage on day six. And of course, there's a covenant for the Sabbath on day seven. And I have a feeling that if we had some time to look, we would find some very special covenants on the other days of the week too. But calendar is on the very first day of the week, so I feel that it has quite a bit of importance. Just a little bit of um, review here for those that never saw the first um, uh, teachings. The covenant of calendar was designed to bring and to keep any or all individuals in a full covenant relationship with their creator forever. And of course, this is the Melchizedek priesthood. We're ever grateful for that, how calendar is tied at the hip with Melchizedek. So that's what this calendar is all about. If you're not interested in that relationship with your creator, well then just keep whatever calendar you want. <laughs> it's just that simple. Covenant calendar is fully 
capable of exposing the darkness of all counterfeit calendars, removing all doubt so Yahuwah's people can know when to meet with him on his appointed times. Uh, what we're finding is that covenant calendar has absolutely no problems at all exposing the errors in every other calendar. And that's incredible. And that's exactly what a true calendar should do from Yahuwah. So this study today is part of the grand finale exposure for the Hebrew letter word 3391 Yarak or the lunar cycle. And I want you to remember that the base of this calendar study is all about evening and I'm saying it is about time and that is a pun intended. Uh, I, I just feel like a study paper is, is in my bones that's going to have a title of it's about evening and it's about time. It is about time that Yahuwah's calendar was restored completely and given to the people. So with that, I think we're ready to get started, and we'll do a review from last week a little bit first and see what we have here. So this is part four. I'm calling this little part four the month, oh, the month. Uh, apparently this word month came from moon. It's an old, old, old English word, and then it was um, uh, morphed or evolved into month. But we have some questions. And I do not expect you to know the answers to these questions, but we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So, all moon, are you really the master of counterfeit calendars? Can you answer that question? Oh moon, does creation serve you? And oh moon, or do you serve creation? Now, you should be able to answer some of those questions, but if not, we will do them at the end. This is going to be the second part for 3391, uh, Yerak. This is the verb component. It is the primitive root for 3394, which is the noun form, and it's Yerak, or however you say those Hebrew words. I need some help there. But that's what we're going to study in this lesson. We did the first part last week. Today is the second part. And we will be examining this as the verb action component of the moon. We've already done all of the other ones. Another question. Will 3391 be able to qualify for the commencement of Yahuwah's set-apart month? That is the question through the whole moon calendar study is, does the moon qualify to be in charge of telling us when the month begins? And some people are using the moon to tell, uh, tell them when their weekly Sabbath begins as well. Does the moon qualify and does it have that job description? This is our cheat sheet. Um, we have some review slides here. These are the Hebrew word numbers for moon, one, two, three, and four. Uh, we've gone through all of these already. 3394, and you can see the Hebrew spelling there. There was 26 listings in the scriptures. This is in the Old Testament, of course. And this was our noun. It was the literal moon in the sky. We found that there was not one verse that said that the moon was in charge of the month. Then 3391, we're going to finish that today. And this is the verb or the action, the lunation cycle for the noun. 3842 is uh, Labana. It's our adjective. It tells us what the color of the moon is. Okay, and had three listings. And then we have 7720, Saharan. It was a simile or a comparison of something that was the shape of a moon, whether it was a round moon or a crescent moon. And 2320 is going to be coming up next study. We'll start on that. Um, this is going to include uh, 2318, which is the verb for the 2320, which is the noun. And uh, basically, we're going to focus on um, the verb itself, repetition, and our big question here that we are all looking for an answer for is, are there really two verb forms for one moon? Why would Yahuwah do that? And also, I find it really interesting that Yahuwah gave us four numbers for the word moon, and I believe that that was deliberate 
absolutely he wants to make sure that you have no questions about this. He never gave one number and put in four different definitions. This is very, very clear. So we did look at 3842 last week before we went to the 3391 route. It was Labana. Remember, it just told us that the moon was white. Every single verse that we, we found had something to do with the moon being white. There was three references in the Strong's and exactly three in the Englishman's. This was our adjective. And we're going to be doing more with this word number in one of our studies coming up. 7720 was a short study as well, Saharan. It was a simile comparison using words like or as. When you see those words, you have a simile. And it would compare it. And we had comparisons of like the um, um, pendants that were put around camels' necks that were round like the, room, the moon or round like a tire or a lady's hairnet or an anklet. Strong's only had one listing, Englishmen's had three, but not one of them had anything to do with telling us that the moon started the month. Of course not. Last week, we started our mapping for 3391. We did creation patterns. We also had a look at creation months, and we also had a look at lunar months. We're going to do just a little tiny review in those areas today, and then we're going to break open the last six components of our little map here for 3391. <clears throat> so these are just very, very small, short reviews for anybody that wasn't here last week. So in the creation pattern, we found that there is, um, in the creation week, perfection, devastation, and then restoration. And you will see this pattern all through the scriptures. Um, it's just everywhere, and that's the way it has to be. Yahuwah um, brings something into the world perfect, and then something happens to blow it apart, and then the next thing he does is restore it. Well, we also found that there is a scriptural pattern and the moon connected to the moon. Remember, perfection, devastation, and restoration. And we had a few examples, like on the first day of creation, we had perfection. Then there was devastation in verse 2, and in verse 3 began the restoration. How about Adam and Eve? They were created perfect, they made a mistake, and they sinned, and they will have to be restored. They were restored back into relationship. That's all the plan of salvation. And someday they will be restored back completely, just as we will be. Yahuwah's people and their disobedience in the Old Testament, um, they, they had perfect ways. They had um, perfect laws. They uh, went away from them into apostasy with devastation. And after 40 years, many, many times, they just said, you know what? We won out of this. And they cried and bellyached. And, and Yahuwah, what did he do? He sent a deliverer to restore them back to himself. And often it was through the feasts and festivals where they had a lot of restoration. What about our creation moon? Well, it was created perfect. And there was devastation. We're going to talk about that sometime in the future with Hezekiah's miracle that altered the moon cycle 3,300 years after creation. And we know that the moon will be restored in the new earth just as well as everything else. So we did that last time. We're just going to look at a little tiny bit on the creation months. There was two of them. One begins on the first day of the month, and another month begins on the fourth day of the creation cycle. So we're looking at a festal month and a lunar month that are given at creation. Uh, we did not understand this like right at the beginning. This took a long time to understand how this all worked. And I don't know why it took so long, because it's completely logical. On the first day of creation, that obviously was the first day of the first week for this Earth. And on the first day of creation, it was also the first day of the first month for this Earth. And just like our Roman calendar on the wall, the first day of January 1, same thing for this calendar. The first day was the first day of the first year for this Earth. Then, on the fourth day, that is the first day of the lunar cycle. 
and you need to go 30 days until you can count out the first day for the second lunar cycle. So what we found is that Yahuwah's um, festal month starts at the first day of creation and uh, we are going to go through this eventually. His month is 30 days long. You count 30 days and then his month is going to begin and that would be down here. I'm sorry the box is covered up. But the lunar month is always three days behind uh, Yahuwah's set apart month start. Doesn't matter what you do, it's always going to be three days behind. So there's two different kinds of months in the creation week. That will make a big difference in understanding. And then we also went through lunar months that we have today. This was not the way that it was um, in the first 3,300 years of this Earth's history. And this is what Mario was asking about, the sidereal month that is actually 27.3 days long and the synodic month or synodic, however you pronounce it. We're going to look at four slides. Remember we talked about the scriptures speak of some very, very special numbers and I just listed a few of them. These numbers that you see up on the screen, you are familiar with them. They're um, Yahuwah's numbers, they're special, they come up all the time, they repeat, they have patterns. And, of course, the 144,000 can be listed among these numbers as well. But what about the numbers 27.3 and 29.5? Are they part of Yahuwah's numbering system? Does it look like they fit in there somewhere? Well, we talked about the side reel month, and it's the month that aligns with the stars. And this is the time that it takes for the moon to complete one orbit of the Earth, and it's an average of 27.3 days until the moon actually lines up with the stars that it had lined up with one uh, lunar month before, 27.3 days. But there is a synodic month that aligns with the sun, and this is when the moon um, is doing its thing up there, but the same visual phase needs to have an extra 2.2 days until the moon can align with the sun. So it aligns with the stars here at 27.3 days, but it needs another 2.2 days to align with the earth and the sun, and that is your synodic month. That is as close as you can get to Yahuwah's 30-day month. So there's two different kinds up there right now. We did a lot of work on that. So we need to have an attention on all moon calendars. When is the new moon day? Well, the rabbis festal lunar month, um, they seem to have it down pat, they think. Which month is their true lunar month? Is it the sidereal month or the synodic, synodic month? Someone tell me how to say that one of these days. Anyway, we all know that it is number two. Most of the feast calendars that use the moon month mark the new moon day according to a particular moon phase and not the completion of the sidereal month. Now, they might be going by conjunction. They might go by the sighted crescent, the first sighted crescent, and there are some that are doing the full moon. So it's a mess. <laughs> Nobody can figure out which phase of the moon they're supposed to go by for this uh, synodic month. Well, wouldn't it be nice if they knew they didn't have to worry? So what is your answer to this question? Here is the question we had last week. When did Yahuwah change his mind and give his people a new set-apart month with 27.3 days or is it 29.5 days per month? Like, when did he change his mind? Where do you find that in the Old Testament? And I'm saying that neither 27.3 days or 29.5 days fit the requirements to be part of Yahuwah's numbering system. And the question is why? It is because of a 19-year cycle known as Metonic. We're going to pop into some new information about Metonic tonight. Right now, what does it mean, Metonic cycle? Well, Meton, he was a Greek astronomer, and he's the one that introduced the term Metonic Cycle. This was around 432 BC, 
And seven of the 19 years had 13 months. I'm sure that you've all heard about that. But the Babylonians already had been utilizing this same 19-year cycle calendar since the 6th century BC. And we're going to find out that it was around 700 BC that um, Hezekiah's sundial uh, miracle happened. So this is about 100 years afterwards that uh, they finally got their calendars figured out. We'll be doing some of that work here coming up in a few weeks. There are lunar roots of the Jewish calendar. The Jews were in Babylon for 70 years and what happened was they ended up there because they were disobedient to calendar and a lot of other things and uh, they adopted the Babylonian calendar dates from the period of their Babylonian exile in the 6th century BC. This calendar was a 19-year lunar cycle and it became known as the Metonic cycle about 432 and that was the basis for the Greek calendar until the Roman Julian calendar was introduced in 46 BC. So Babylon, Greek, and Rome are all revolving around this calendar. Does that ring a bell? It should because these are all pagan nations. This calendar with the 19-year cycle has very deep roots in several pagan nations and they all need to have a 13th month somewhere along the line. Well, let's get back to the moon. Because the full moon reigns in the sky all night long for only one night each lunar month, the moon has nothing to do with separating the day and the night seasons. We did this last study. The moon has absolutely nothing to do with the day or the night seasons. In fact, it's in the day sky just about as much as it is at night. But, there's always a but, isn't there? Here's the question. Can the phases of the moon separate or rule Yahuwah's festal months? Because it certainly doesn't separate the day from the night. So can it separate the months? Well, that depends on who you ask, and it depends on which phase of the moon, and it depends on Hebrew definitions. It depends on a lot. So we want to see tonight if 3391 will provide any answers for us. So we're going to take a closer look tonight at 3391. This is the verb form for the moon. And basically it means the cycle or the lunation of the moon. And it is labeled as a month. It's a month or a moon month. The Strong's has two listings and Englishman's had 13 listings. This is the verb. And I know you probably can't see it, but from my Englishman's concordance, it showed me that Englishman's had 13 listings. And when you get the PowerPoint on your desk, you can take a quick close look at this. And if you have it on your, um, your um, computer program, you can take a close look as well. But there's 13 in the Englishman's. Two listings actually are translated as moon, and the other 11 are all translated as month. So we need to be looking at that tonight. We'll just review this definition from the Strong's. Yarak, from an unused root of uncertain signification, and the very first definition is a lunation. And the second one is month. And like I said, in the King James, it uses month 11 times in the Old Testament and twice for moon. And we're going to be looking at the definition of lunation in an ordinary soon and find some surprises. Brown Driver Briggs has it a little bit different. Remember I told you Brown Driver Briggs is not always the best source to go to first. I'm very, very careful when I use Brown Driver Briggs because he can be either like really good or really lax. He has the first definition as month and then he has moon and he says a month or a calendar month. So very vague. I highly recommend not to rely on Brown Driver Briggs. Okay, so we've just done a little review on one, two, and three. We are going to look at point number four, which will be beings of light. We're going to compare Yahuwah and Lucifer. In the fifth, fifth section, we're going to look at definitions around the moon. We'll be checking out lunation, 
Lunar and Luke. I wonder if you've seen that word Luke before. In the sixth uh, section, we'll be looking at Lucifer and Luke. I'm not going to tell you what you're going to find yet. And in section seven, we will be looking at some family words in the Strong's Concordance. Uh, actually, it might just do everybody a whole lot of good just to start reading <laughs> the Strong's Concordance. Read the word numbers around whatever you're looking at. You might find some surprises. And in section number eight, we are actually going to look at the 3391 scriptures, all 13 of them, to see if any of these scriptures tell us that the month is started with the moon. That's what we're looking for. And number nine is going to be puzzle solving. I've chosen three scriptures. They're very tricky ones. I hope you're not too weary to pay attention when we get to them. But we're going to look at Psalms 81.3, Numbers 10.10, and Deuteronomy 21.13. So let's get started. We'll start with section number four, beings of light. We're going to compare Yahuwah is light and Lucifer is given light. It's just a short presentation of four slides, but you need this information before we go further. So what about light in Yahuwah? The Creator, who is light and created light, dwells in unapproachable light. This is a very interesting study. You could probably talk on it for two hours. I'm just going to give you a nugget today. In 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16, it says, he who is the blessed and the only potentate, the sovereign of sovereigns and the master of masters, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. That's the New King James Version. I hope you don't mind that we're, I'm putting in the sacred names and sacred titles. In 1 John 1.5, this then is the message which we have heard of him, and we declare unto you that Yahuwah is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So when I go back to Genesis 1.1, and the creator shows up on the scene to start his creating, well, I have a picture in my mind of light, of seeing light somewhere. Well, what about light in Lucifer? We all know that there was a sense of brightness around Lucifer. It says in Isaiah 14, 12, Lucifer, son of the morning. If you look up the word, the name Lucifer, it's 1966, Hillel. It's from 1984 in the sense of brightness, the morning star. Lucifer, it connects to brightness and it connects to light. I looked up 1984, which is Hillel. It is the primitive root. It means to be clear, originally of sound, but usually of color. To shine, to make a show. Uh-oh, now look. To both, and thus to be clamorously foolish. To rave, causatively to celebrate, also to stultify. Hmm. Very interesting definitions that are connecting to Lucifer. Well, exactly who gave who light? We know the Creator is light, and we know that Lucifer means light, means brightness, but I'm here to um, project that the Creator is the only one that can give Lucifer his light and his brightness. Lucifer doesn't have any light or brightness of his own. And soon we're going to see how these concepts connect to the word Luke. So please remember this. Put it on the back burner for right now. Okay, we're ready to look in Section 5. We want to do some definitions around the word moon, and we'll be specifically looking at lunation, lunar, and Luke. We will do an introduction into the definition of Luke. You need to pay attention here as well. Let's understand 3391 first. It is the root word for the set of family words between 3391 and 3394. Remember, 3394 is our noun for the word moon. The definition of the root word is the most important. 
And the very first definition of 3391 is lunation, or the cycle. It does not mean moon, and it does not mean month. Lunation is always linked to the moon, but it is the cycle. And the stars and the sun also have cycles, but they are not called lunations. When you hear lunation or lunar, it is always something to do with the moon. So I went to um, our ordinary dictionary here on the shelf that's been here for decades. Um, when I looked in the uh, Strong's Concordance for lunar and uh, whatnot, these words that came up, I just thought, I wonder if I really know the definition of lunation today as it is in the dictionary. And there it is um, in the box. That's exactly how it is in the dictionary. I just wrote it out. This is the time elapsing between two successive new moons. Okay, everybody, this is talking about a synodic month. Look what it says. An average of 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and 28 seconds. So this is not talking about the side reel month. This is a 29 and a half day moon month. And then it said from Latin, luna, moon, see lunar. Okay, I said, then I better go look up the word lunar. And you guys can do this too. You can go get your dictionary and look this all up. So again, this is defining the synodic month. So I thought, I better understand the word lunar. And it says, of, involving, caused by, or affecting the moon, measured by the revolution, or that would be the cycle of the moon. And then it says, a lunar month, a lunar year, and then everybody, this is what it said in my dictionary, see Luke in the appendix. You can see what it says right there. It says, see Luke in the appendix. Now, my dictionary is about as big as a Strong's Concordance. It's a great big one. Actually, it's Richard's dictionary. And I was thinking, wait a second. I've never heard of a dictionary having an appendix. Like, that's new to me. So I'm thinking, I, I better go see if this uh, dictionary really has an appendix. And sure enough, it did. Well, we're going to look at that word Luke in a little bit and find out what it had to say in my appendix. But we should understand Luke's connection to lunar. Luke is connected to both lunar, that's the literal moon, and it is connected to lunation, which is the moon cycle. And you can have a review there on the slides. Uh, I have 106 and 107. I don't know what that's doing there, but <laughs> must be further down. Anyway, the moon has no light of its own. We did that last study as well. Remember Isaiah 13.10? It talks about the masculine moon. And the sun has the masculine and feminine uh, uh, characteristics. And the, the word light, which is or, is feminine. And it's the sun that picks up the feminine. Moon has no light. It's only masculine. It has nothing feminine about it. But the moon has always had its own lunar cycle since creation. And that cycle began with a perfect 30-day length. So I have another question for you. And it's, it's probably a pretty hard question. Was it Yahuwah's purpose to allow side reel and synodic months of different lengths? Think about that. Because there was no such thing for 3,300 years after creation. So was it Yahuwah's purpose to allow the moon to have a side reel and a synodic month, and they both have different lengths? Sure. And did Yahuwah build? Yes. Well, sorry to interrupt you. I should have let you go with your question there. I, my, myself, from what I've studied, I do not believe that either one of those two months are Yahuwah's original plan. Um, he he did a uh, he altered his original plan of a 30 day month and uh, or 30 day lunation for the moon. He altered it and we come out with the side reel month. He did that for the express purpose of uh, separating the lunar cycle so that his people would recognize the difference and uh, hopefully they would. Not, uh, not keep gravitating to the pagan system of worshipping or serving the moon. 
And when, when he did this, like he, Yahuwah was actively searching to save his people. He was, he, that he altered his original plan for our salvation. And so what, what did man do? Man went ahead. He took the lunar, the, this modified lunar month, and he threw away Yahuwah's uh, boundaries that he uh, declared designated in a, a circle. And they supplied their own perimeters, and they developed a synodic month. So, in fact, what it is, this synodic month uh, does not exist in the sky according to Yahuwah's designation, designation or his rules. This synodic month is an absolute fabrication of man. It's just a figment of his imagination is, is actually what it is. So, both of these, mm-hmm. both of these months are just... Uh, well, the side real month, I believe, fully is going to be restored back to original 30 days uh, uh, near the end of time. This synodic month, which is man's fabrication, uh, it, well, it's, it's, it doesn't even exist today if you go by Yahuwah's rules. Just my thoughts. Mm, yeah. And... I'm really glad that you brought that up because I didn't want this question to sound like that Yahuwah had two different kinds of months because that wasn't the way it was. It was never his design. And we're going to do this eventually before we finish the calendar study. Um, But uh, when we do the whole history of what was happening in the Old Testament, then you will understand why I'm posing this question right now. So now the last question on the slide is really important. And we're, we're not going to answer this question in this study. Has Yahuwah designed a built-in test for every religious calendar by allowing these two different kinds of months to be on the table today? Now, everything was perfect in Creation Week. And Yahuwah had plan A, and it was a good plan. But when his people went astray, and they just would not come back, to worshiping the way that he had asked them to worship. He had to do something to get their attention. We're going to talk about that later. It was the sundial event, as, as far as we can understand. He had to get their attention big time. But he didn't. He didn't seem to move them very much. But the thing was, out of that great big event, they'd now come up with a side reel and a synodic month. And I believe that that was a built-in test which one are they going to choose? Well, they chose the one closest to the 30-day month. And that's the one that's the most popular today. I don't know anybody that's following the side reel month. But that is a test for everybody that is um, feast and festival keepers that are, that are following a calendar. That's the test right there. So big sure. test. Okay, sure. We're done with that section. Yes. Uh, China followed the side real month for for centuries and centuries and centuries. Uh, Islam follows the side real month still today. That's why their their religious calendar is totally out of out of sorts with the seasons. Mm. Mm. Okay, Tim, I did not know that. Um, you've done a little extra study that we haven't written papers on this yet. We've just been too busy concentrating on covenant calendar. We haven't written papers on all these other calendars, but that's interesting, um, of course. Um, so there is some evidence there. And boy, Islam is a pretty big nation, one of the biggest nations in the world, if it's not the biggest. So they're doing a side reel month, and yes, they would definitely be off. Okay, we're going to come back to Lucifer and this word Luke. There's 10 slides here. Hang on to your seats because this section might have some really huge surprises. We're going to examine the definitions of lunation and lunar and find out what these definitions have to do with the word Luke. Remember that word Luke was in the appendix of my great big dictionary. It is connected to lunar, which is the literal moon, and lunation, which is the moon's cycle. It's connected to both of those terms. So here we go with the definition for Luke, and it was from the word lunar in this dictionary. I'm not going to read all the definitions, but it says light and brightness. That's from the Germanic. 
and the Old Testament, Old English, it says Latin Lux Light Lucifer. It goes on to say from the form Luke, Sna in Latin, Luna, Moon, Luna, Luna is there twice, Lunar, Lunate, Lunatic, Luni, Lunula. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what some of these words are. I should have looked them up. But do you notice that in Latin, Luke is connecting both Lucifer as Lux to the moon, which is lunar, and that's connecting to the synodic month. I was shocked when I saw this. I, do not, I did not see this in the Hebrew, but definitely lunar and Luke and lunation is connecting to Lucifer. Well, why? Luke comes from the words lunar and lunation, meaning light or brightness. In Latin, the word Luke is lux, and it simply means Lucifer. Lucifer and the moon connect through these words, light, whiteness, and brightness. Think about that. What about Lucifer's loss of perfection? Well, we know he rebelled. He had a chance to repent, but he refused. He had some time to think about it, and he said, no, I'm not changing my mind. I don't care what you say. And so he had to be cast out of heaven. He became the ruler of darkness of this world and the dark prince of the air, and his new serpent names are Satan and the devil. He will never again be an angel of light, even though he can make it appear that way. And he is now the prince of this air. I just, um, I just uh, listened to some Bradford Scott here in the last couple of days, and the second day of creation was not pronounced good. I might even have that in the PowerPoint, I can't remember. But the second day is not pronounced good because Satan is the prince of the air, and the second day was where the waters were divided and you have the atmosphere. Luke comparisons of Lucifer to the moon. Lucifer had no light. His light came from the S-O-N. That is the creator. The moon has no light. We discovered that in the last teaching, uh, especially from Isaiah 13.10, and the moon's light is a reflection from the S-U-N. Is there a connection between these two statements? Lucifer gets light from the sun, and the moon has reflected light from a sun. Let's do another little review here. Comparisons for Luke. It is the suffix form in Old English for light. In Latin, light equals Lucifer, plain and simple. The suffix form of lumen in Latin is luminous and illuminate. And the suffix form of luna in Latin is moon. Remember we read it? Lunar, lunate, lunatic. Remember all those definitions that we had there? Everything is connecting to Lucifer, between Lucifer and the moon. We will investigate luna very shortly. That will have some surprises as well. What does all of this have to do with 3391's lunation cycle or 3394's literal moon? Well, I'm think, seeing that the moon is equal to lunar, lunation, Luke, and borrowed brightness. And Lucifer's light came from the sun. It was not borrowed, but it was given to him to reflect. The moon is dark until it receives light reflected from the sun. Is the moon connected to Satan through darkness? Here's a thought to ponder. Does it sound like this lunar lunation cycle would have the authority to commence Yahuwah's set-apart months and yearly worship statutes? When Lucifer and the moon are all connecting together, do you really think Yahuwah would use the moon to... Calculate his set-apart months. Will Luna know? Well, let's look up Luna. Some scriptural comparisons. 
These are family words from the Greek and it connects to the word lunatic <clears throat> in Matthew 4.24. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people and those which were lunatic. That's what it says. Lord have mercy on my son for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. He looked up these words in 45.83. I don't even know how to say that. Selene Asmoea, <laughs> however it is. But anyway, it's the middle voice or passive form from a presumed derivative of 4582. It actually means to be moonstruck, struck, crazy, to be a lunatic. Well, let's look up 4582. Selene from Silas, brilliancy. Probably akin to the alternate of 138 through the idea of attractiveness. And then it says the moon. And what about Selene, the Greek moon goddess? There she is, taken right out of the Greek Selene. But there's more. There's a mystic Luna. Let's look at some comparisons here. Luna is the Roman mythology, the goddess of the moon the counterpart of the Greek Selene. And there is a um, statue of Selene. You can find that in the Vatican Museum if you go back there. Hmm. So are Luna and Selene involved with Yahuwah's festal months? These are pagan goddesses of Rome and of Greece. We're done with that. Just think about it. I want to look at some definitions and some family words between these numbers of 3391 to 3394. And if you don't know this by now, you'll know it by the end of this presentation. 3391 is the lunation cycle. 3394 is the literal moon. Yerek and Yorok, they're very close. And we're also going to look at 3399 to 3405 about contention and the fall of Jericho. Because these are all family words. We're going to compare them between the verbs and the nouns. And we're going to look at some descriptive definitions that will lead up to Jericho and the moon-worshipping city that it was. And we want to find out if there's going to be another connection between the lunar, or the moon, and Lucifer, or Satan. Well, 3391, that's your root word. And I want you to note that the definition of the root word is the most important. The first definition of 3391, do you remember? It was lunation, or the cycle. It is not moon, and it is not month. In Hebrew, it is a verb-oriented language. It's action-oriented. So the root words will usually be action-oriented, if not always. And lunation is always linked to the moon, not the sun, not the stars. They do not have lunations. They have cycles. We already did that. So let's look at some words around 3391 being the primitive root. Well, between 91 to 94, you'll have 3392. It's Yorok. It's a name of an Arabian patriarch. Sounds about the same. 3393 is spelled exactly the same. It is Aramaic, and it is used for 12 months or Adar, the 12th month. You see these family words all are some of them are all, what is there's three of them there that basically are spelled exactly the same. So it's Yorok and Yorek. Yorok, someone help me with that somewhere along the way. Anyway, these last two Hebrew words don't have any connection to the moon family words of Yorok and Yorek as far as um, something to do with a month. They just are uh, in that family. And I want you to remember this when we get to the study on 2320 Kodesh. We'll be coming back to this. Well, I looked at some family words that came after 3394. Uh, 3399, uh, just look at what these definitions are saying. It said to hurl or turn over. 3400, throne of Yahuwah. 3401 was contentious and adversary. 3402 was the same as 3401. It was a name that meant contentious. 3403, 
is also from 3401. It meant contend. 3404 was from 3384. It meant to throw. And then 3405. That is linking to 3394, and it was Jericho, or Jericho, a contentious city. Yarak and Yarak and Jericho, they all have those familiar family-sounding words in Hebrew, not in English and probably not in any other language. So the general definitions give the picture of something contentious, something being thrown over, like Jericho, that moon-worshipping city. Remember that Joshua was commanded to take down Jericho before they went further into the Canaan land. Luke connects the family words. These meetings between 3391 to 3394, they connect Lucifer with the moon through lunation, the literal moon, and Luke. Remember, Luke meant Lucifer and all the borrowed brightness that Lucifer had and the moon has of brightness and whiteness. 3391, 99 to 3401, or 3405, sorry. These were words that had contentious and adversarial definitions, just like Lucifer, and something that needed to be thrown down, just like Jericho. Do you see how Luke is connecting all of these different words together? What about Lucifer and Jericho being cast down? Well, it does. Luke connects to Lucifer. He was cast down from heaven. And the words 3399 to 3405, all of the meanings of contention, linking to Jericho as a contentious adversary in moon-worshipping city. Yes, Jericho had to be thrown over before Joshua could enter further into Canaan. And I believe there's an end-time application as well. Before entering the heavenly Canaan, all sacred regard for the moon to command worship statutes of any type is going to have to be cast down or placed under the foot. We did that study already. That moon has to go. It has no part of Yahuwah's calendar whatsoever. And it seems to have a very, very strong hold on just about everybody that follows the peace calendar. So what's wrong with this picture? A beautiful menorah, big moon, and it has a wonderful title that says, Feast Days of Yahuwah. I wish you all had your mics on to tell me what's wrong with the picture. Well, the moon has been cast down. It is no longer in charge of calculating the feast days of Yahuwah because it is under the foot. The moon is gone. This is not a good picture to depict the feast days of Yahuwah. If you haven't seen that study, uh, just go back and ask for it. The moon's ordained job description is for special agricultural ordinances to bless the earth and mankind. We learned about that. But there's Wiccans and there's moon worship all over this earth, right along with the feast keepers. Pagans have always worshipped the moon. Who has the authority to change you who is mandate for the moon? to commence it in charge of the festal months. I would like to know who has that authority, because somebody does. Was it Luna, was it Selene, or was it Satan? Who has the authority to put the moon in charge of Yahuwah's festival month? Okay, let's move on to section number eight. We're going to now look at the scriptures that are used for 3391. There's 11 of them that use the word month, and there's only two that use the word moon. We only have six slides in this section. We're looking to see if one of these scriptures commands the moon to be in charge of the month. 3391 is used two times. It's translated as moon, and 3391 has 11 times translated as month, and three times it is talking about a pagan month with a name. Yahuwah's festal month has 30 days. The moon month has a lunation cycle of 27.3 days, is the one that's the most popular. And it also has that side reel cycle of, um, oh no, this is the side reel cycle, right, of 27.3 days. Yahuwah's month renews and rebuilds after 30 days. 
and for 3,300 years, the moon was renewed after 30 days, but it isn't anymore. We're going to go into that in a lot of detail when we do 2320 Koshak. 3391 month verses from the Englishmen's because the Strong's only gave you two, so you have to look into the Englishmen's to find the rest of them. Uh, the scriptures are listed here, and we're going to take a look and see if any of these verses commence Yahuwah's month. A month as 30 days. Now, I would like you to pay attention to the scriptures. Put a date to these scriptures. And um, remember that at Hezekiah Sundial is what we're saying is when the month, the moon month, was no longer 30 days for a month. That's where it switched to something else. It got busted, <laughs> in other words. Exodus 2.2. 2. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. We all know this is talking about Moses' mother when she built the little basket of reeds and set him in the river. This is a pattern of 30 days, and it, it would be counted by a lunation cycle probably easy. Well, I put my little boy into the Nile River. It was a full moon night. Okay, so that is perfectly okay. Deuteronomy 21.13. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month. Now this is Deuteronomy, so you know that this is well before 700 BC, and we're going to address this verse in a lot of detail real soon. But does this month have anything to do with you who is month start? First Kings 6.37 in the fourth year was the foundation of the house of Yahuwah laid. It was in the month of Ziph. So this is just naming a month. It's not telling you anything about a month starting. The next verse, it says, And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month. This is another one of those verses that just names a month. And First Kings 8, 2, And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast, in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And again, it's just naming a month. We'll continue on with 2 Kings 15, 13. I'm going to give you a date here. This is approximately 772 BC. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the 9 and 30th year of Uzziah, king of Judah. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. This would be 30 days. Does that tell us anything about the moon starting the month? No. Job 3.6. I consider Job a Torah book. He lived approximately 1520 BC, sometime between Abraham and Moses. This is what Job says. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year, let it not come into the number of the months. It doesn't sound like it's naming the moon to be in charge of the month. Another one from Job 7, verse 3. So am I made to possess months of vanity, and wearisome nights are appointed to me. Actually, that word month is actually an adjective, isn't it? Another one from Job 29, verse 2. Oh, that I... I were as in months past, as in the days when Yahuwah preserved me. It's not telling you anything about the moon commencing the month. Job 39.2 Canst thou number the months that they fulfill? Or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? This is talking about fertility cycles. It's not telling you that you're using the moon to name a month. And one more. Zechariah 11.8, this is around the time of 487 B.C., so this is after the sundial event. It says, three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Now, of all of the verses that we've read, this one's probably the trickiest. I'm, I have to say that this month would be a moon month, a lunar cycle of the 27.3. That would be how many days would be in that moon month. Well, the context is about false shepherds that are worshipping idols. 
they're worshiping idols according to probably the moon idols and the sun idols, sun, sun gods and moon gods. The whole uh, chapter, you have to look at all of the context. So this is not talking about Yahuwah's month, and it definitely doesn't tell us that the moon starts Yahuwah's month. There's two more verses where 3391 is used, and they're both using the word moon. We've already done this verse. It's an agricultural reference to the moon's lunation cycle, which is the action. In Deuteronomy 33:14, it says, And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon. This is one of the ordinances of the moon. In its lunation cycle, it brings forth the agricultural harvest. This has nothing to do with how a month begins. There is one more. It is a prophetic reference to the moon's lunation cycle, which is also in action in Isaiah 60, verse 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. That means the lunation cycle isn't going to withdraw. For Yahuwah shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. This is actually a prophecy. I don't know if you remember that the very first time that moon is ever used in the Torah is in Genesis 37 in regards to Joseph and his dream with the sun, the moon, and the stars, and it was a prophecy. And that, that to me, is the most important, um, uh, probably the backbone of what the moon is really supposed to do for us to tell us about prophecy, although it does the agricultural goodies as well for the earth and for mankind. Charlene? Now, yes. Yeah, I'd just like to point out for somebody who doesn't quite recognize the full depth of this verse, Isaiah 60, verse 20. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. When you think about this really clearly, uh, with the only way to get a new moon is when that moon withdraws itself. If the moon does not withdraw, there can be no rebuilding or renewing of the moon. So Isaiah is telling us right here that on the earth made new, that's the context in the chapter, that there will be no more new moons. That's right. And that's what's going to say in this box down here that we're going to address that in a future study in a lot of detail. But I'm glad you put that little tidbit in there because um, maybe somebody here tonight won't see the, the future teaching. But anyway, is a very interesting verse, Isaiah 60, verse 20. But between the two verses above, only one of them is a Torah reference using moon. And I have a question for Deuteronomy 13, and it might be tricky. The beginning of the month, where, yeah, where we're talking in Deuteronomy 33, 14, is the beginning of the month starting with a lunar cycle? In Deuteronomy 33, 14, it says, And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon. Is the beginning of that moon month starting with the lunar cycle or with Yahuwah's other month? Or the beginning of the month, is it starting on the first day of the set-apart month, or is it neither? That's just a question for you to think about. I want you to start to learn to start thinking out of the box and processing some of these ideas. So just a little review. The lunar month was designed for agricultural ordinances, and I'm sure glad it was because we can have beautiful gardens and all kinds of things. However, the ordinances of the lunar month were exchanged by sinful man, and they were substituted for the commencement of pagan worship statutes, giving homage to the pagan moon god. The pagans were completely, always uh, mesmerized by the lights in the sky. It didn't take long for Yah's people to be following right after them. After the sundial event, the lunation cycle changed from 30 days per month to an average of 27.3 days per month. That's the side real month. The metonic cycle stretched the lunar month to about 29 and a half days per month. That was from meton. And that would be from phase to phase. It doesn't matter if you start with the conjunction, with the sliver, with the quarter moon, or the full moon. It's still going to need 27.3. Uh, 
No, if you're doing it face to face, it's 29.5. When 3391 is used, it is usually connected to the moon's original creation week lunar month of 30 days. Remember that verse in Zechariah was the only one that would have been shorter than 30 days. That's why you need to look at dates around your scriptures. Your dates are going to break open the study completely. And at creation, both types of months, they both had 30 days each. Because who does things in order? How can we know for sure? Because he does things in order. Okay, we're going to look at the last section on puzzle solving. And this is a, a tricky section. We're going to solve between Deuteronomy 21.13 and Numbers 10.10. 10. And then we're going to solve between Numbers 10.10 10 and Psalms 81.3. So hang on, because it's a little bit tricky. And we can always come back and look at these slides after we're done. Now that we know that 3391 has the verb action, meaning the moon cycle, and we know that the moon month from creation also started out with 30 days, and we know that lunar and lunation connect to the words Lucifer and moon, we are now ready to examine the next point. So here is the question. Same question as we've been going over and over and over. Does 3391 as the moon month ever, ever refer to Yahuwah's 30-day creation month? And the question is, why? Because the Englishman's concordance lists 3391 as month rather than moon's lunation in Deuteronomy 21.13. We're going to examine a really tricky problem here. Are these scriptures synonymous? Psalms 81.3, if you've been a feast keeper for any length of time, you've heard this over and over, that this is how you know when the month begins. It says, blow the trumpet in the new moon, and it's connected to Joseph. The number is 2320. Have you heard this one, though? Numbers 1010, blow the trumpet in the beginning of the month. That is also 2320. And then there's Deuteronomy 2113, where it says, we've read this already, but we'll come back to it, bewail her family for a full month. This one here is 3391, Yorek. Is this 3391 month the same as Yahuwah's set apart month? The reason I'm asking this question is because that's what is being taught out there. Do these three scriptures support the new moon month being in alignment with Yahuwah's set apart month? I hope I'm going slow enough so you can grab these concepts. Deuteronomy 21.13 is the one that is being taught that the moon is in charge of the month. Let's scrutinize that one first. It is a Torah verse, and it is often used to prove that the lunar month is identical to Yahuwah's original set-apart 2320 month for the feast worship statutes. And this is what it says. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thy house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month. It's 3391. It's the cycle of the moon. And when a maiden was taken into captivity, she was allowed one month to mourn for her family. Yahuwah made sure about that. And that captivity could occur on any day of the month in either his set-apart month or the moon month. That's totally logical. And it would be very easy for a pagan maiden to calculate the full 30 days by following the 3391 lunar cycle from sliver to sliver, or full moon to the next full moon, or any phase in between. 3391 is the best choice for the context of this verse, is absolutely the best. Because Yahuwah has regard for the pagan captive. When Israel raided these pagan nations and they took captive maids, it would be very, very unusual for the maidens to not already follow the moon cycle system of counting. That's what they did. The pagans were following the moon. Yahuwah was very sympathetic towards these captured maidens, and they were to receive every Torah benefit. And in this way, she could confidently count out 
her rightful days of mourning through the moon phases before she has to be subjected to her captor before her allotted time. She gets to have those 30 days. And later, the captives would learn of Yahuwah's worship covenant calendar, and they would understand that the Sorry. month doesn't start with them. Yes. I believe that's a pattern that Yahuwah laid down for, for everyone. Uh, every, every person that is observing by the moon, when, when, they, when they come to the realization that there's a problem with observing times by the moon, I believe that Yahuwah set this pattern of the pagan lady so that everyone would have a time to study, time to understand and become convinced of their own accord on this pattern. Yahuwah will meet us where we're at, and he is so sympathetic towards us, loves us so much, that he gives us every opportunity to study for ourselves and, and become educated for ourselves in his word. And you know what? That has everything to do with the mixings. Uh, when we're going from darkness into light, we go through a mixing period of time where we're sorting things out. And, of course, uh, Yahuwah does that. He's made provision for that. But it works the other way, too. If, if we've had the light and we choose to go into the darkness, we have to go through that mixing period where we're actually making a deliberate decision. That's exactly what happened to Lucifer in heaven. He decided he was going to go the other way, and Yahuwah gave him a period of time, and that was his mixing time where he had mixtures of, you know, good and bad, and he chose bad unfortunately but yes we all go through this so it's you know isn't that great that Yahuwah doesn't judge us um, there's going to be a lot of resistance to to the truths of cal covenant calendar because people are not used to it they're used to what they've heard what they've been taught they thought it was true they want to believe it um, but now what I'm what I'm seeing is that um, they're seeing studies and there's resistance right from the get-go um, they're not taking time to say, look, I need to study this out. There is complete resistance. That's what scares me. Um, but if people say, look, I need to study it out, and even if they need a year or two, whatever, Yuhua, um, he helps them through that. He winks at it while we're learning. Okay, there's more to this puzzle with this Deuteronomy scripture. We're going to compare Numbers 10.10 10 to De Deuteronomy 21.13. Numbers 10.10, 10, it says, Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months, that is 23.20, that's Kodesh, you shall blow with the trumpets. Deuteronomy 21.13, please let me read it again. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off of her, and shall remain in thine house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month. This is a moon month. Now, both of these months, one is a 23.20, one is a 33.91 that is connected to the moon, they appear to be synonyms, but are they? Let's solve this puzzle. In Numbers 10.10, 10, the wording is given as blow the trumpet at the beginning of the 2320 month. We haven't done the 2320 study yet. And Deuteronomy 21.13, the wording is given as a full lunar month for morning of captivity. Both Numbers 10 and Deuteronomy 21 are referring to very different months. These are not the same. These are not synonyms. They are not similes. In Numbers, it's a trumpet month. It is attached to 2320 and the renewing of Yahuwah's month that has roots in day one of creation. That's what Numbers 10 to 10 is talking about. Deuteronomy is a captive month, a captivity month, and it's linking to 3391 because it's talking about a captive maiden and the lunation cycle so that she can tell when her month is up, and that lunation cycle has roots in day four of creation. Numbers 10 to 10 has roots in day one. Deuteronomy 21 has roots in day four. 
These are very different months. Numbers 10 and Deuteronomy 21 do not fit together. In fact, Yehua's 2320 month, that's Kodesh, is never, ever the same as the 3391 lunar month. And we will be breaking open the study on the 2320 starting at the next, um, the next time we come together. But this right here, Deuteronomy 2113, because they're using 3391 and calling it a month, the teaching out there is it is a exactly the same as the 2320 month, that they're both the same, is absolutely not true. Okay, let's go to the second puzzle. We've done Numbers and Deuteronomy. Let's compare Numbers 10 to Psalms 81.3. And this is quite a puzzle as well. I'm going to read Numbers 10.10 10 again. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months, your 2320 Kodesh months, that's when you blow with the trumpets. Psalms 81.3 says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. It's 2320. In the solemn appointed, in the time appointed on the solemn feast day. New month and new moon. Same numbers. They appear to be synonyms, are they? Let's take a closer look at these two, Numbers 10.10 and Psalms 81.3, because you will have a lot of people question you on this, and I want you to have an answer for it. Numbers 10.10 and Psalms 81.3 are giving instructions for when the trumpets are blowing. The context is not about one specific time on one specific day. They were to blow the trumpets at these times. On the first day of every month, that was 2320, and that was for counting worship statutes. They were to blow the trumpets at the fullness of the solemn holy feast days, when they were fully come. And they were to blow the trumpets on every feast day during the weeks. That was a command. Now, will Numbers 10 and Psalms 81 agree to fit together? Numbers 10 is a Torah verse. Psalms 81 is not a Torah verse. Let's take a look. Compare them. Numbers 10.10, 10, a Torah verse. It says the wording is given as beginning of your month. It's 2320 Kodesh month. Psalms 81.3 is a non-Torah verse. The wording is given as new moon. When you look up the word, it is 2320. But moon is improperly translated. It should say month. And we're going to go through a whole bunch of this in the, uh, in the upcoming study on 2320. It's probably going to get broken into two sections. But this was mistranslated by the 1611 translators of the King James. Both Numbers 10 and Psalms 81 are referring to exactly the same 2320 set-apart month of 30 days, or that's Yahuwah's month that began on the first day of creation. And the months of Psalms and Numbers are not linked to the moon. Your Bibles will say moon. It is not moon. It's the wrong word. It's been added. Let's scrutinize Psalms 81 with Numbers 10. I have it color-coded. You'll see blue and green and a brown color. Blow up the trumpet. It should say in the new month, 2320, because that is the renewal of the first day of Yehuah's month. Blow up the trumpet in the new month in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. And that's 2282. That's every festival. So now, Psalms 81.3, written by King David, he has to follow the Torah instructions given by Moses. And we're going to do studies on King David as well. He followed Torah with all of his heart. It's color-coded, Numbers 10.10. 10. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months, this is the 2320 Kodesh month, not the 3391 lunar month. That's when you blow with the trumpets. 
Between Psalms 81.3 and Numbers 10.10, there is not one mention of a lunar month with the number 3391. 3391 never qualifies any lunar phase to commence Yahuwah's feast months. And guess what? Psalms 81 and Numbers 10 do agree. The puzzle is solved. But you've got to get that word moon out of there. Some final conclusions for Yorak. Deuteronomy 33.14 is the very first 33.91 Torah reference that aligns with a moon month of 30 days. And remember that there's 11 verses that uh, use the word month, two that use the word moon. For 3,300 years, the moon month had 30 days in its cycle, which began its commencement on the fourth day of creation. That's over half of the Earth's uh, life that it gets, 3,300 years. Not one 3391 moon month reference ever, ever gives instruction to commence Yahuwah set apart month. We looked at all 11 verses. Not one of them said anything about using the moon month or any phase of the month. Only two references used the word moon instead of month. One was an agricultural reference and one was a prophetic aspect of the moon. That was Isaiah. Remember that? Nothing to do with commencing month. And not one of the 13 verses lended one single bit of support for the set-apart month to commence any phase of the moon in the sky. 30 through 91 simply means the actual lunation or the cycle of the moon in any moon month. And that's all. That's all it does. It has something to do with its lunation cycle and the ordinances. Up until that sundial event, it had 30 days, and so did the set apart month. It had 30 days, but they did not start on the same day. That's the end of that study. But there is a thought to ponder, and I'm going to throw a few things out there for you to think about, and this is some homework. Somebody said to Tim this week, oh, but it says in Daniel. It says something in Daniel. It's like, okay. <laughs> Some say Yahuwah changes the times and the seasons. Does he? Does Yahuwah change his plans? Did he go from plan A to plan B? Are we looking at a, re uh, at a perfection, a devastation, and a restoration? Does he have to get back to plan A? I think so. And if he did change, what does this mean for his covenant calendar if he changes times and seasons? Well, look in Daniel 2.21. This is what it says. And he changes the times, it's 57.32, and the seasons, 21.66. He changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He, that's Yahuwah. Let's do the definitions for the word seasons first. It's 2166. It is Zeman, it's Aramaic, it's from 2165, and it is exactly the same as 2165. It means season or time. And 2165 is from 2163. It means an appointed occasion. I would link this to an appointed set-apart feast and festival, a season and a time. And 2163, Zaman, it is the primitive root. It means to fix a time, to appoint. So the verse said, and he changes the seasons. He changes them. Here's the question. When did Yahuwah change any seasons or appointed times? Let's look at the next part, the definition for times. It's word number 5732. It's Eden. It's Aramaic again. It's from a root corresponding to that of 5708, which is a set time, technically a year. So something about the year that is changing. That should ring a bell to you, a time. 
Let's look up 5708. It's in red letters for a reason. Ed, from an unused root, meaning to set a period, and it says to compare 5710 and 5749. The menstrual flux as periodical, by implication, in plural, soiling, and filthy. He changeth times that are filthy. Is that what it's saying? How did Yahuwah change any times to become soiled and filthy? And the question is why? I want you to think about these things. Because we're done. We're going to go back and we're going to answer the questions that were at the beginning of our presentation. Oh, Moon, are you the master of counterfeit calendars? Does creation serve you? Or, Moon, do you serve creation? Let's find out what our answers are. Question number one, O oh Moon. Are you the master of counterfeit calendars? Yes. Every calendar that uses any phase of the Moon, the Moon is master of that calendar. O oh Moon, question number two. Does creation serve you? Friends, absolutely, yes. Every new moon, every moon day, and every 13th month, there are many around the world that are serving the moon. Question number three. Oh, harvest moon, do you serve creation? Yes. In Deuteronomy 33:14, it says, and for the precious things that are put forth by the moon. That is through the ordinances, its job description, through the lunation cycle, that we have all of the abundance of harvests and tides and all those kinds of things that we talked about. Yes, the moon does serve creation. I'm glad it does. But back to our original question. Can the phases of the moon separate or rule Yahuwah's festal months? The question as answered with no. The Hebrew 3391 Yarak does not allow this option, not ever. It's nowhere in the scriptures. Nowhere. So the question, does the moon begin the month? We have looked at all four numbers that have to do with moon in the Hebrew. The 3394 is the literal moon in the sky. Does it begin the month? We looked at every single verse, all 26. No, there was nothing there to tell us it rules the month. We just finished looking at 3391, the lunation cycle for the synodic month. There was not one thing there that said the moon is in charge of the month. Labana is the color or the whiteness of the moon. Well, that didn't have anything to do with starting the month. And 7720 is Saharan. It was round objects that are compared to the moon. Well, that didn't have anything to do with starting the month. Not one of these four Hebrew words for moon supports Yahuwah's festival month beginning with the moon. We have looked at all of the verses. There's not one. The moon is only in charge of the ordinances. And thankfully, it does a good job. So where did this idea come from? Is it all man-made that the moon is in charge of the month? Well, friends, that's going to be the next presentation. That's where we're going to break open 2320. It's Kodesh. And it is the only Hebrew word found in 20 non-Torah scriptures. And it names either the Sabbath, the festivals, and or the new moon day. Or is it the new month day? These are the only 20 scriptures. And they're all non-Torah. It has these groupings of three. Sabbath festivals, and new moon. We're going to find out what's going on. So what's next in part five of the moon on the moon? We're going to exposing the counterfeit. We're going to find the truth about this 2320 Kodesh, and I'm calling it Yahuwah's month. Oh, Yahuwah's month. And I think we'll be ready to do that on August 17th. And that's the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, 
or comments or you want to catch us by email, that's the contact. Thank you. Very well done, Charlene. Very well done. I am excited. I am absolutely thrilled. I am looking forward to the next one on 2320. I'm, this, is, this is fabulous. I'm going to pull a Dane in. Praise Yahuwah! Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk right up. Uh, Joshua was coming to me, Joshua. Talk right up. Um, like a long time ago, we would like refer to our calendar and to look at the you know start of the month. Like once a month is like really the only time that we actually pay attention to anything. But now it's like we uh, write it down on our chalkboard and pay attention to the days of the month every day. That feels all right. Better. Mm -hmm. That's better. Yeah, every day is better than once a month. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That was, thank you, Charlene. You know, it's one of those uh, teachings that we need to go back and go through that a couple of times. I mean, there was a lot of information in there. I have um, so quite, a, quite a few notes in, uh, in here. Um, wow. Uh, I got to go through my notes now. So uh, this uh, thing, this uh, Menton thing was named after some guy named Mr. Menton, right? This uh, metonic cycle thing. And I think uh, Psalms 118 says, uh, trust Yahuwah, not men, right? And so, uh, yeah. Hey, yes, 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 yes. Sound of the shofar. And we shall know that. <laughs> All right. Hey. Just to let you know, um, I've never had a problem carrying the, the uh, shofar on the plane with me. So, uh, are you bringing your shofar? Um, probably, if, if you want me to bring it, sure. Yeah, I, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be driving, I believe. So, yeah, we'll bring it for sure. Oh, you're driving. Okay, well, there you go. Bring it. No worries. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Anybody have any questions? Oh, there, there you go, Henry. Yeah, man. You coming up for uh, for uh, Sukkot up to Oregon with us? Hoping to. All right. I am planning to do something about how what I'm going to do about the the um, the the festival, the, the coming festival. Yeah, I, I haven't really decided where I'll go to. But anyway, just for tonight, just to my question about today is thank you very much again. I still feel very... Um